For those of you who don't know, I am what you call a seafood enthusiast. You may now also refer to me as the Anton Ego of seafood. And today is the day that I'm going to finally make the greatest seafood tier list of all time. So recently, I've realized something about myself. I'm getting kind of fat and I'm not really surprised. I've taught myself how to cook good food and these happen to be the consequences. I know, almost forgot. Seafood means seafood, not river food. And I don't eat river food for the same reason I don't eat trash. It's disgusting. Listen, seafood belongs in the top of all the food categories. Yes, it's better than red meat, yes, it's better than dairy and even veggies. And I don't want seafood to be part of something that is this much disgusting. So no river food. I think I got my point across. Now the plan is simple. I have handpicked a bunch of popular seafood and I am going to categorize them into 5 tiers on a scale of S to D. S being the best and D being the worst. First up on the table we have an instant classic. Tuna, but in a can. This is the Toyota of the seafood industry. Everybody loves it. It's cheap, it's reliable and it has a very long shelf life. I mean, 3 to 5 years. That's kind of too much, isn't it? It's perfect for any situation. After work, after school, in a zombie apocalypse. It's just perfect in every possible way. And also it's plug and play. You can eat it right out of the can and drink the tuna water at the end. It's a full meal in a can. Overall, this is the best seafood out there, but taste wise, it gets a B. The taste is pretty good, not gonna lie. It's pretty good, but it's not the best, right? So you have to put it in the B tier. Salmon, also known as the snobby fish. A lot of snobs really think that salmon is the best type of fish out there, but boy, are they wrong. Here's the thing about salmon. 75% of salmon sold in the market comes out of Norway and Sweden. Yes, even to Japan, salmon comes from Norway. And that means it's expensive. Now, I don't mind paying a premium for something that's good. But salmon does not have that price to performance ratio. Yeah, it has a lot of recipes to it, but so does a lot of other fish in this list. I feel like this is overrated, but also it's kind of pretty good, but it's not that good. I'll give it a B. Sardines. Every time I try sardines, they underwhelm me in every single way. It gets worse every time I eat it. It smells worse than a landfill, it has more oil than the Middle East and it has more bones than a cemetery. It is one of the worst types of food I have ever had. I don't know why some people go through this torture but these things are selling a lot more than I imagined. Apparently a lot of people love it. Not me though, since my nose works really well. It's definitely a deep. Now this one's a weird one, sailfish, the fastest fish in the ocean, but not fast enough. I've had sailfish my whole life and this was my favorite type of seafood growing up. And now I'm sick of it. It has probably tied out my taste buds or something like that. Uh, I find it quite inedible these days, but, but sometimes I kind of like it. You know, rarely people know how to cook sailfish very well. And if anyone disagrees with me or agrees with me, I kinda get it. I understand it. It has a very unique taste to it. It's somewhat like chicken, but it's also like tuna. It has a unique flavor to it. I really can't describe it. And the best part is, it doesn't smell. It does not have that fishy smell to it at all. Most definitely an A. 
the great english delicacy fish and chips fish and chips has quite the reputation despite being not that good no the problem is not the recipe at all in fact the recipe is really good the vinegar the batter the chips they are really good the problem is with the fish cod and haddock i don't know how the lot of you might feel about it but to me they are slightly above average it's something that you probably eat just for the experience of it probably a see but but if used on the right fish if fish and chips is used on some kind of good fish like sail fish or a tuna a, a tuna steak or salmon it would bounce up into something like most definitely an a now the next one is kind of a weird one and i am not going to dig my own grave here because this is somewhat illegal in most part of the world but um, i really haven't read the laws of this land and i'm not going to say that i had it but i'm just going to say this it's shark and it is one of the most disgusting things i have had i've had shark on lunch and it was with rice and it had shark with it i didn't know that it was shark i ate it like an idiot and it just ruined my whole lunch shark is not supposed to be eaten at all there is a reason why lion's meat or any carnivore's meat is not available on the market it's because they have a foul smell and foul taste to them they really are not built out of food there are some people out there who lure the uneducated into having shark fin soup it might sound exotic and a lot of people fall for it but it will be one of the worst meals you ever tasted sure it's an experience but it's not a good one it's definitely a d mackerel this is kind of like the hybrid of tuna and salmon but it tastes way closer to tuna also it comes in a can too just like the tuna so yeah you have a lot of options mackerel tastes good it tastes just like tuna and kind of like salmon and it's also cheaper than tuna and it's very versatile but it really is nothing but average it does not have the good taste of tuna or salmon but it kind of holds up it's not disgusting it's just average so it's a c at best sushi the tyrants of the industry you talk about seafood you talk about sushi the thing is bringing sushi into this list makes it way too complex because there's a lot of sushi out there and i don't want to waste a lot of time on sushi but i'll tell you this i haven't had a lot of sushi in my life but i do plan to the biggest reason happens to be cooking sushi it's a complete nightmare especially traditional sushi you need to find sushi grade fish and this and that and sushi is really not worth that hassle it's a good exotic food it's kind of like one of the best exotic foods out there and for those who really don't enjoy seafood this is kind of like the you know everyone agrees with kind of thing anyway it's really never worth the hassle of preparing it and arguably not really worth the money it's kind of expensive it's very tasty though it's kind of like a sandwich but with rice so yeah it's a b i'm giving this an overall score of b because uh, i've had sushi that is a tier and i've also had sushi that's c tier and it kind of like you know normalizes it into the b tier right 
And no, none of it broke into the SDL. Now comes the good stuff. First up, prawns and shrimp. One of the many delicacies enjoyed in a lot of countries, but eaten wrong in every single one of them. Now, the shrimp has four parts. The head, the tail, the legs, the shell, and the meat. Wait, that, that, that's five parts. That, that's five parts. My bad. And some idiot out there popularized eating shrimp without the shell. Why would you do that? What was your motive? I don't care if the shell is bad for you. I don't care if it uh, stores something like a chemical compound that you will collect and kill you slowly. I don't care. If you haven't had shrimp with their coats, you're missing out on a lot. And you definitely should have shrimp with their coats. The shell is important. It keeps the flavor of the shrimp sealed into the body while being cooked. And it's just another whole new reservoir of flavor. If you can't bite through it, cut it into pieces. Don't eat it without the shell. It ruins the whole food. And don't eat only the shells. It does not work like that. If eaten without the shell, Shrimps are a mere bee. It's nothing more than, you know, good. But if cooked and eaten with the shell, if cooked and eaten the right way, it's a definite A. Next we have the forgotten middle child of seafood, octopus and squid. This is also one of those rare treats in life for a person who lives in a country that is not addicted to seafood. Since I live in a country which is kind of addicted to seafood, I regularly find myself eating these. Sometimes they are cooked wrong. Then you may ask me how to cook octopus the right way. It's quite simple, it's quite simple. You have to cut them into bite-sized pieces or into a medium dice in culinary terms, but don't go too hard on the spices. Mollusk meat is really bad at absorbing spices. So if you cooked an octopus as a whole, you're kind of wasting it. You need to cut it into pieces, cook it however you want, and then scatter it throughout a carbohydrate, such as noodles or rice. Takayoki is a fine example of octopus made right. It tastes so good when made the right way. And don't be a heretic and go the other way. Without a doubt, an A. The takayoki will also get an A, because it deserves it. Next up on the table, we have the two emperors of the sea, crab and lobster. Without a doubt, this is one of the best meals out there. In general, it rarely gets any better than this. And the best part is, it's almost never cooked wrong. It gets better every time I've had it. And it's really, really good. If you're going to cook it at home, it's kind of a hassle. But that hassle is well worth it. You can have crabs in many ways. Cook them however you want. Crabs with cream cheese, which is crab rangoon. Fried crabs on fried rice. Crabs with a huge Cajun seafood boil. Or even crabs on a cake. It's a real crabby situation out there. And it's really the exotic delicacy you yearn on a special day. Excellent in every shape and form from the great Alaskan king crab to the tiny ones in the beach, they really are one of the best. Lobsters on the other hand, they are even better mate. It's a dish served and cherished in many cultures worldwide, which means we have a lot of recipes to cook. Supreme A tier, both of them. First up on the grand table, we have fried rice. Oh, not just any fried rice. 
This is not made out of leftovers. It's freshly prepared. It's seafood fried rice. Even then, it's just not any seafood fried rice. It has to be made with prawns, octopus, lobster tail, crab, sailfish and a little something that I'll tell you later. The amount of flavor in a single bowl of seafood fried rice is truly remarkable. Now the next one is kind of a rarity. It's very hard to find and even then a lot of people don't know how to make you try it. It's something related to the soft body diets. It's cuttlefish. The amount of ways to cook cuttlefish is really limited. And out of all those recipes, a lot of them make cuttlefish taste no better than chicken. Very rarely do you find a type of food that is good as this. And the recipe, what it is and how to cook it the right way is going to be for another day. But when cooked right, you'll even lick the plate. But what is truly the best? What is the true God's feast? What do I think as the best seafood out there? From the dark depths of the sea, we find the greatest of fishes, the tuna. But this is not just any tuna. You know, there are a lot of types of tuna out there. Yellowfin, bluefin, frigate. But there is a tuna out there that is very special. It's so special that its meat is darker than any meat you've ever seen. It is the skipjack tuna, also known as the katsuo in Japanese. It's used for sushi, sashimi, katsuboshi and dashi and many many types of recipes. It's almost always made well, but there is one recipe that is better than any of those recipes. It's made with so much spices that it turns the fish black. There is nothing better than this recipe. There is no recipe worthy to even combat this behemoth of a recipe. What is it? How to cook it? It's a story for another day.